Usually, when teams complete the interrelationship graph, they transform it into a matrix format to be more presentable and readable by others. So they use the interrelationship matrix shown here. The same concept we discussed before applies also in constructing this matrix. Issues or ideas are placed vertically and horizontally. Then arrows are drawn from drivers to outcomes in both directions. For example, issue 1 horizontally is an effect of issue 2 vertically. So a down arrow is drawn at the intersection here, while an up arrow is drawn at the intersection of the switched places of the issues. We can place a dash for no relationship. At the end, in and out arrows are counted and significant drivers and outcomes are highlighted. Let's see how we can do this with Microsoft Office Excel 2010 for the same vision scenario we were discussing. Okay, this is Microsoft Office Excel 2010. First, we write all ideas vertically and horizontally as you can see here. Since each pair of similar issues have no cause and effect relationships, we can highlight their intersection cells in gray. So the efficient and lean processes with the same issue vertically should be uh, with no relationship. So we can highlight it in, let's say, gray. The same is done for leadership with leadership and training with training. Continuous improvement with continuous improvement and so on. We can change them into some coloring. Now we can use the conditional formatting feature to draw relationship arrows. To do this, we highlight the entire matrix of ideas. Then we go to the Home tab and under Styles, we click the conditional formatting. In the icon sets, we select the second set, which is the three triangles. Let's use the following convention to draw arrows. We'll use number 1 for a driver, minus 1 for an outcome, and 0 for no relationship. To apply this convention in the conditional formatting rule we selected, we go to the conditional formatting and manage rules. We select the applied rule and hit the edit rule button. In this section, we change the default criteria uh, according to our convention. So, for up arrow, we change it to be when value is greater than an equal to zero, since we need the up arrow for one. Then, for the dash, we select it to be when the value is less than zero and greater than or equal to zero which is actually a zero the last rule which is the down arrow is applied when the value we insert in the cell is less than zero so we have the result is we have an up arrow for a value greater than zero and a dash when the value is zero and a down arrow when the value is less than zero. Let's select the this option of show icon only in order to to hide the values themselves and have the icons only in the cells. Hit OK and OK again. Now we are ready to fill in relationship values. We can use the interrelationship di diagram we constructed before to fill in these values. So 
Let's copy the diagram onto the page for easier reading of the relationships. So we copy the diagram, Control C. Go back to the Excel and Control V to paste it. Okay, so we start with the ideas listed in rows. So efficient and lean processes with leadership is an outcome relationship. So we assign a minus one value here. We fill the opposite value of one for the switched positions of the issues. So leadership with efficient and lean processes is a driver. So this reads as efficient and lean processes is an outcome of leadership or leadership is a driver to lean and efficient processes. Continue with efficient and lean processes with training which is um, which is an outcome relationship so we assign minus one again and in the opposite direction training is a driver to efficient and lean processes when assigning va uh, values is complete we count out arrows and in arrows for each idea horizontally you can use the count if formula in Excel which is used to count specific values. So under the out column for the first idea we write the function of count if hit the tab button then we specify the range from which the formula reads the values comma then we specify the criteria or the value to be counted. Now for out driver, the value should be one. So we have here two, uh, two values of ones, or in other words, efficient and lean processes drives two other ideas. Now in the outcome column, we write the same formula, count if, we specify the same range, the criteria here is minus one as an outcome. So the efficient and lean processes has three uh, down arrows, or in other words, it is driven by other three ideas. Now we apply both formulas across all ideas vertically. By this we'll be able to figure out the significant driver, which is in this case the leadership, with the highest number of out arrows. And also we can figure out the significant outcome which has the highest number of out arrows, uh, sorry, n arrows. Practically, this tells us that leadership drives most of areas required to achieve the vision. So, we have to focus our efforts to develop leadership in order to achieve significant progress towards our vision. And we can depend on the level of customer satisfaction as a key performance indicator or measure of our progress in achieving the vision. Okay, I hope this video clarified the benefits of using the interrelationship graph and the interrelationship matrix and how they link to achieving business goals and res resolving complex problems in which multiple issues are interrelated. Thank you for watching and see you in next videos.